Welcome back to Autocar India Quick News, your weekly dose of all the latest news from the automotive world. Before we begin the video, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified each time we upload a video. We start this week with news from Toyota. The Japanese manufacturer will debut its version of the partner Maruti Suzuki's Franks on the 3rd of April. Toyota had trademarked the urban cruiser Tizen nameplate in India in August 2023 and we expect the upcoming crossover to carry the name. The urban cruiser Tizer is not expected to look identical to the Franks with small changes expected on soft parts like the bumpers and grille. Toyota's version is also likely to get different LED DRL light signatures and wheel designs. And it'll be the same story on the inside with changes expected to be restricted to colors and badging only. It is certain that the 1.2-litre petrol engine from the Franks will be carried over to the Tizer and a CNG version will likely be offered too. However, what remains unclear is if the Tizer will also come with a 1-litre booster jet turbo petrol engine. The Government of India has approved a policy to attract investments of a minimum amount of 4,150 crore rupees in the EV space with no upper limit. As an incentive to this, companies investing in EV manufacturing facilities will be permitted to import cars in limited numbers at a reduced customs duty rate. However, the catcher is that the participating companies must establish their manufacturing facilities in India within three years and commence commercial production of EVs. The policy dictates that cars with cost, insurance and freight value of $35,000 or over 29 lakh rupees will be levied 15% as customs duty for five years if the manufacturer sets up manufacturing facility in India within a three-year period. Additionally, they are required to achieve 25% and 50% localization by the third year and fifth year respectively. This new policy could be just what manufacturers like Tesla might be looking for as an entry into the Indian market. Tesla has been lobbying with the government to reduce import duty for years now. One of the most interesting developments from the past week was the announcement of the partnership between MG Motors and the JSW Group. The joint venture will be named JSW MG Motor India Private Limited. Thanks to this investment, MG Motor plans to revamp its vehicle portfolio in India. Representatives from brands have said that they plan to launch one new car every three to six months. Sources say that MG Motor is set to add two new electric vehicles, a five-door SUV and a compact MPV, both likely to be positioned below 15 lakh rupees. MG's upcoming new electric MPV will be based on the Wuling Cloud EV, which is currently sold in Indonesia, and sources add that it is likely to hit the road within a year's time. The MPV will be around 4.3 meters long and has a wheelbase of 2700 millimeters, which is slightly shorter than Maruti's Ertiga at 2740mm and a tad bit more than the Renault Triber. Apart from catering to families, the three-row EV will also be aimed at the fleet segment. The SUV will be a five-door rugged vehicle on the lines of the Maruti Jimny and will be based on the Baojun Ye Plus SUV. Not much is known about the upcoming SUV except that it will be based on the Comet's GSEV platform. In a joint statement post-announcement of the partnership, both companies had said that they will pool in resources in the field of automobiles and also undertake multiple new initiatives including augmenting, local sourcing, improving charging infrastructure, expansion of production capacity and introducing a broader range of vehicles with a focus on green mobility. Moving on to the launches of this week, BMW India has launched the top spec 620D M Sport signature variant for a price of 78.9 lakh rupees. Visual differences on the M Sport signature trim are minimal when compared to the M Sport trim, but the list of differences include addition of soft closed doors, front comfort seats with full electric adjustment, memory function and lumbar support, as well as special backrest cushions for the rear seat. The comfort seats are lapped in Dakota leather with exclusive stitching and contrast piping in black. As for equipment, the 620D M Sport signature gets a BMW display key with remote control parking, keyless entry, automatic locking, powered tailgate and a rear seat entertainment package that comprises of two 10.25-inch screens. Other features include a 4-zone climate control, a 16-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, two-part panoramic sunroof, ambient lighting, electrically adjustable sun blinds and more. The 620D M Sport signature makes use of the same 2-litre 4-cylinder diesel engine as the other 6 GT variants which puts out 190 HP and 400 Nm and is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. BMW India has expanded the iX lineup by adding a higher spec X-Drive 50 variant priced at 1.4 crore rupees. Compared to the older X-Drive 40, the X-Drive 50 gets a bigger 111.5 kWh battery pack which sees the WLTP certified range jump to 635 km. 
The iX is powered by two electric motors that produces a combined 523 horsepower and 765 newton meters of torque, which is capable of propelling this electric SUV from 0 to 100 kph in just 4.6 seconds. BMW claims that the battery will take 35 minutes to charge from 10 to 80 percent with a 195 kilowatt DC charger, 97 minutes using a 50 kilowatt DC charger, and about 5.5 hours with a 22 kilowatt AC charger. If you want to use 11 kilowatt AC, then that will take 11 hours. Though at first glance it might look like the XDrive 50 and XDrive 40 are identical, the new variant does get some minor upgrades. The XDrive 50 comes with 22 inch alloy wheels and adaptive suspension as standard. In addition to that, features like laser headlights and titanium bronze exterior finish and active seat ventilation are offered as optional extras. Volkswagen India has introduced new trims for the Tygoon SUV and the Virtus sedan. The Tygoon now additionally gets the GT Plus Sport and GT Line trims. Two trims feature a range of visual enhancement over the standard Tygoon to help them stand out. As far as the exterior styling is concerned, the Tygoon GT Plus Sport gets smoked LED headlamps, carbon steel grey roof, red GT branding on the grille, fender and rear profile as well as dark chrome door handles and red brake calipers. Additionally, the SUV also gets gloss black front grille, diffuser, wing mirrors, alloy wheels and fender badges. The cabin of the GT Plus Sport variant features an all-black theme that includes black leather at upholstery with red stitching, black headliner and gloss black inserts on the dash. The red stitching can also be seen on the steering wheel while there is a GT logo on the front seats. For the GT line, the Tycoon gets the same chrome delete on the outside but misses out on the red brake calipers and red GT badge on the grille and gets a GT line badge on the doors instead. There are no changes to the powertrain on both trims as they carry over from the standard variants. The Tycoon GT Plus Sport is available with the 1.5 litre TSI turbo petrol engine, while the Tycoon GT line gets the 1 litre TSI. Both engines also carry forward the manual and auto gearbox options as the standard variants. For the Virtus, Volkswagen has introduced the GT Plus Sport variant for the sedan. The existing line of GT variants already comes with blacked out alloy wheels, roof, wing mirrors and bumpers, but the GT Plus Sport takes it a step further by giving a blacked out treatment for the chrome lining on the front and the rear bumpers and the grille. Additionally, the row handles have a new dark chrome finish, the GT badges on the grille and the fenders as well as the brake calipers are now finished in red. On the inside, just like we saw on the Tycoon, the Virtus GT Plus Sport gets an all-black interior with red highlights and red ambient lighting. There are no additions to the equipment list. Global NCAP has crash tested the Citroen EC3 electric hatchback and it has rated the model a disappointing 0 star rating in adult occupant protection and a 1 star rating for child occupant protection. The car tested was an Indian made model and is among the last few cars to be tested under Global NCAP's Safer Cars for India campaign. The EC3 scored a total of 20.86 points out of 34 in adult occupant protection. The report noted that in the frontal impact test, the driver and the passenger's head and neck protection was good but protection to the chest was rated weak and poor for the driver and passenger respectively. Moreover, protection to the driver's knee was marginal as it could be impacted by dangerous structures behind the dashboard, although protection for the passenger's knees were good. In the side impact test, the head showed marginal protection, chest showed adequate protection and the abdomen and pelvis showed good protection. However, Global NCAP noted that the difference between the front and the side impact made the car lose one star in the overall result. However, the report noted that the footwell area and body shell was stable and it was capable of withstanding further loads. The EC3 was not subjected to a side pole impact test as it does not offer side airbags and does not meet Global NCAP's minimum availability requirement of ESC. It also does not comply with UN 127 pedestrian protection norms. In the child occupant protection test, the EC3 scored 10.55 points out of 49. The child seat for the 3-year-old was installed facing forward using the adult seat belt and it could not prevent excessive forward movement and head contact with the vehicle interior in the frontal crash. The model that was tested was equipped with dual front airbags, belt load limiter and seat belt reminder just for the front two seats. The EC3 does not get ESC nor does it get seat belt pretensioners, side airbags, isofix anchorages or seat belt reminders for the rear seats. The saving grace here is that Citroen has announced last month that they will introduce six airbags as standard across all its models in India for the second half of 2024. The EC3 will also gain isofix seat anchorages and rear seat belt reminders as standard soon. These should help improve the scores in a few months' time. Over to news from Two Wheelers. Triumph has taken the wraps of the Rocket 3 Storm Duo and in this spec, the bike is most powerful it has ever been. 
The Rocket 3 Duo are powered by the same liquid cooled 2458 cc inline 3 cylinder engine that now makes 182 horsepower at 7000 rpm and 225 newton meters of torque at 4000 rpm. This is an increase of 15 horsepower and 4 Nm over the already potent standard Rocket 3 range. To improve its performance, Triumph claims that the new 10 spoke cast aluminum wheels are lighter than the ones found on the current bike. With its 18 litre tank fully brimmed, the Rocket 3 Storm R weighs 317 kg while the GT is 3 kilos more. Braking duties are taken care of by twin Brembo Stylema calipers biting down upon large 320mm discs at the front and radially mounted M4.32 caliper clamping down upon a 300mm rear disc. Seat height for the R is very manageable, 773mm, while the GT 750mm perch makes it even more accessible. Feature-wise, the Storm gets a TFT dash that controls all the riding aids on offer. These electronic aids include ABS, traction control, four riding modes, hill hold control, and cruise control. Triumph also offers features like heated grips, bi-directional quick shifter, tire pressure monitoring system, and Bluetooth module for the dash as an optional extra. Keyness ignition, all LED lighting, and a USB charging port are part of the standard kit on the Rocket 3 Storm models. Cosmetically, the main difference in the Rocket 3 Storm for the standard version is that every component on the bike has been blacked out. Even the three colors on offer, blue, red, and black, cover only the top half or the bottom half of the tank for the R and GT respectively. Interestingly, the Rocket 3 Storm models have been listed on Triumph India's website at Rs 21.99 lakh and 22.59 lakh for the R and GT respectively. Considering that the bikes have been listed on the Indian website, these Storm versions should make their way to our shows very soon.